This is a video to walk you through how I use Language Reactor and YouTube subtitles to capture subtitles which I can then use for an exercise. So the first thing is to make sure you've installed Language Reactor. There it is, languagereactor.com and then you would get it on whatever you're using. So I'm using it on Chrome. As I've already installed it on my Chrome toolbar here, you can see an LR standing for Language Reactor. So I've already got it installed. Whenever I'm using video or YouTube, I try to go to the official site. So presumably that way, the person who's created the video gets a reward each time somebody clicks on it. So what I'm interested in here is in Stromae's recent television interview where he launched his new album and tour. So I've gone to Stromae, I've clicked on videos and there's the video that I want, which I will now open to do the Now because I've recently looked at this in preparing to create this video, um, it's already got Language Reactor on, but if I just click Language Reactor off and Subtitles off, this would be normally the way that you would see it automatically. You have used the influence of the five continents. You have used the instruments, the rhythms, South America. So there you can see it without any um, subtitles at all. So even if I didn't have Language Reactor, I can click on Subtitles to see what is available. So here it is in English. Africain, Asiatic, African. Est-ce que c'est un hommage un peu à la culture globetrotter transmis? But then, if you look on the settings, I could change that to French. And the fact it's come up as French rather than auto translate means, I believe, that the people who've put this video together have put a human translation to this. So it should be that as we watch it, it'll be what they've decided to use. So let's see what that goes on, how that happens. Miss par votre maman, on sait qu'elle vous a beaucoup fait voyager. Elle nous a fait beaucoup voyager en en sac à dos et et d'ailleurs oui, non, on a on a voyagé. So you can see there that's how a human translation looks. And then if we were to change it to sorry, subtitle, closed captions. If we go to settings again, French, if you wanted auto translate, then that's how you would choose what translation you want. But here we don't have to do it because we know that it's available in English and a human translation as well. But as far as I can see on um, YouTube, you can't then export these. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to switch on language reactor. So here I will now make this turn on. And here you can see that the setting that I've set for Language Reactor means that you've got the French and you've got the English underneath it. So let's look at the settings next to Language Reactor to see how I did that. So here I've got false original tack, uh, tracks, um, what the subtitle language is, French, the translation is that. I didn't put that in there, it must have just known that I think. Um, but certainly I've made it that I've switched on that I want to see that and I want to see the human translation. If I were to click show machine translation, you can see what happens now. Bit confusing, although it's quite interesting, isn't it, to see that there's the top one, I suppose, is probably the original. This may well be the machine one and this may be the human one. Let's have a look. Au Mali, on a voyagé au Mexique. Uh, uh, on a voyagé vraiment partout et uh, elle a toujours eu cette envie d'aller voir ailleurs quoi. By the way, it's stopping because of a setting that I've put on to the language reactor that it has to stop after every pause. And that used to irritate me before I realized that I can take that off. So if we go to the settings and here you can see on the various things that it allows toggle auto pause. So at the moment, I've obviously got auto pause on. If you look here, green, automatically pause playback at the end of every subtitle. So I can just click et, there. And there, uh, oui, non, on, on a voyagé au Mali, on a voyagé au Mexique, uh, on a voyagé vraiment partout. Et uh, elle a toujours eu cette envie d'aller voir ailleurs. Quoi. Or I can switch it on again. So you can see that to switch it on or off, You've got the controls over here. I'll do that again. Et moi, de la même manière pour cet album. De... So it's on now. It's stopped as he paused. If I want to turn it off. Euh, J'avais envie de euh, d'aller chercher des grooves. En fait, un truc que j'aime beaucoup faire, c'est vraiment chercher des grooves différents. 
But what you can do also is you can use the key Q in order to toggle those controls. So I don't have to do it by the mouse, I can do it by using Q. So now, just to show you what happens then if I'm pressing Sans pouvoir pointer un pays Q, du doigt. Uh, I'm pressing Q now. Parce que j'avais pas envie d'avoir un morceau uh, bolivien, un morceau uh, uh, congolais, un morceau rwandais. J'avais vraiment envie de mélanger. So either by using the toggle keys Q or by using this, you can make it so that it automatically stops after each pause. So now let's go back to this idea about having the French translation and then the human translation and then the machine translation. To see the subtitles to the right in a separate way, what you have to do is to hover up here and you've got three lines there, open or close the vertical view. So if I click now, now you can see the titles there. Voilà, je pense qu'on l'est tous, on est tous multiples, on est plein de, plein de personnages différents, on a plein de personnalités différentes. Et... So once you're in these subtitles, you can see if you're using this anyway. It's just absolutely brilliant. Look, just by, it's just hovering over a word, you find out what it is in French. There, je sais, from savoir to know. I really don't know what to do with you. Um, justement, just as it happens, I've considered this. I mean, just absolutely brilliant. You can do that, and there are all sorts of things that you can explore where they put the words into different levels and you can save words that you want to learn, etc. But the purpose of this video is meant to be to say how can you export the words. So here we go, you can see here export, click on export and here I can decide whether I want it to be in print form, HTML or Excel. Um, I like having things in columns so I'm going to go to Excel. I want to see the human translation, I don't, actually yeah, out of interest I'll see the machine translation. Include the timestamps, yes. I don't I haven't saved any words, so I'm not bothering with that. And I don't need any vocabulary highlighting. So then I will export. And here it goes. And then I decide where it's going to go. Well, you can see here that I have done this earlier. There I've got Stromae Multitude. Um, I'm just going to put in the one that we'll work on now, version two, save. And then magically, here it is down here. Click on there opens up Excel and I mean honestly just look how wonderful this is you've got the timestamp for where it comes the subtitle the translation and the machine translation and that's where thinking about it I think it's quite good to have both because for my purposes often I want to be able to tell students exactly which word means which word. I want them to be able to relate it. So sometimes I don't always want a human translation which might have made it more English, um, easier to read, but might uh, conceal which word means which. So I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to control C and make a copy of the human translation, insert copied cells. This is the one that I'm going to use, HEM translation, and then I will adapt it as I go through. And just a little Excel thing, I can see that sometimes the, the, that here I haven't got the text wrapped. So if I select all and then go to wrap text, then we'll be able to see it all. Um, and also I like to have it so that it goes up to the top there. Another little Excel thing, because I'd like to have the spelling in, using the UK spelling rather than the American, I'm going to select that column, I'm going to go to review, and then I'm going to go to spelling, and because I've just done this before, um, it did say French, and I've now changed this to English United Kingdom. Um, so I'm going to go through now and change those. Okay, so I've now done it. Um, it's quite interesting actually, from a language point of view, that sometimes the machine translation actually is closer than the human translation, even to the sense that I think he wants it to give. So it's really worthwhile doing that. As I've said, for the purposes of a language exercise, I always try to get this as close as it can be to the literal translation of the French. 
I'm now going to put this into a Word document because that way I can print it off very easily for the students um, and then I'll use it for creating a text debate or a teach vid exercise. Um, and I think I might as well keep up the keep the time in it as well. Might need that later on. So, so Control C, and then I'll open up my Word. There we go. Blank document and Control V. There we go. So I've done that a little bit hastily. In fact, I wanted to retain the grid line, so I will go and change that. So I'll go up here and I'll undo the paste and this time if I right click and then I'm going to choose uh, use destination styles. Click on there. There we go. That's how I wanted it. By the way, I did put in deliberately put in some returns before I did that. If you hadn't done that, if you do control and then return, that then creates somewhere where you can put your title and then you can then delete. So if we go to get the title, go here, I'm going to have, this is the title, so control C, and go to Word, then right click and I'll just paste text only so it doesn't keep the formatting, and then I'll do a return <coughs> and I can delete the page break. Oops. I don't know what I did there, I did something wrong, so I'll just redo it. So what was it? Control, Shift, and I go to get the title, control C, back here, right click, just keep the text down. Oh, it went over there anyway. I don't know why. Okay, so there we are. It's Trop Mail Enfer, Life Forwards. And I also put in the YouTube link. So I think I'll leave it at that now because I've done another um, video already as to how I then use this to make a teach vid or a text debate exercise.